Well, 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 welcome back to Crown Scooter Cave, coming out you from yet again, another country. My God, we've been all around the world together, and I do want to wish you a happy uh, after 4th of July day, which means that, well, for most people, just another Friday, and for the Americans out there, I do want to wish you a happy Independence Day. Hope everyone's safe and safe out there, not blowing off any hands with, uh, the far with all the fireworks. Bitcoin having its own fireworks, speaking of, and so we got plenty to talk about. It was actually quite my surprise coming back and getting off the plane uh, earlier this morning, and... And uh, then, getting the set, then getting the internet set up and seeing Bitcoin in a completely new level as well. So as always, Bitcoin doing all sorts of things. And without further ado, let's get into the live scene right here, right now. And I'll initiate that good old teleportation. And there she is. And let's get into the live scene. There it is. Okay, beautiful. Oh, and before I get going, I should remind myself to talk about all the programs that are on sale for the rest of the weekend for the good old American holiday, the 4th of July with the code FREEDOM20. Let me actually bring it up just really quick. And uh, before, before I get too going, I do want to remind myself to say and apologize for the um apologize for the more mobile setup which we're running right now as uh yes you know still still kind of under uh, you know under the whole moving still don't have access to all my uh, tools but there's a the code right there freedom 20 that goes for all the payment plans on all the programs and of course always goes without saying more importantly that hey for 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 most people those programs are completely overkill you don't need them unless you really want to be uh doing this in a more serious manner typically you know uh, wanting to do this as a living you know as a profession um of course not everyone's going to be doing that but I always encourage you to check out the reviews, make the own decision for yourself. If you're autonomous, you can make that decision for yourself. I just want to let you know that these are very, 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 very long and uh, and financially heavy programs. So for so if you aren't fully committed, then that is definitely not for you. You can probably get away with just viewing all of the free content that I have on my YouTube, of which I do have a technical analysis one-on-one -on -one playlist. So definitely start out there, and uh, and that's probably going to get most people the way that they want to be. So if if in doubt, definitely don't do it. But without further ado, let's actually talk about some guys. Uh, damn magic internet money because my god just been talking about myself the whole the whole damn time and so uh, what do we have here on bitcoin well bitcoin breaking back down the red 10 simple so that's kind of my bias for uh, for short term not being bullish and uh medium and long term kind of more neutral than anything we are still above the yellow 20 money expansion average on the daily which is you know it's still technically fine from a more longer term perspective but uh, the daily is starting to be in a little bit more of a state of purgatory right now if we do break below the yellow 20 money expansion average that will that will bring my short medium and and well, long term no long, long, long term it would not change my bias but short and medium term it would change my buys uh, for a move down uh, into the low 9,000s, about 92 to 9,300 if we do break that area. And what I mean by break is I mean a daily total close below that 21, which is uh, coming in around 10,600. So I do like that. That's a also a structural pivot. We'll go down to the lower time frames in a second. And so you'll see, you know, it's, 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 it's lining up with plenty of things. So even, you know, a four hour total closing below there is probably going to do it. It's probably not going to look too damn good if we actually, if we actually do start closing uh, higher level time frames below there. So uh, that would be what I'm looking at right on over over here, but for now, I'm pretty much neutral. <laughs> like I said, uh, before I left, um, before I left Finland, I was in that big long position on the December futures as I was showing right on over here. And uh, oh, it looks like I actually entered into a little bit of a short right there. Yes, exactly. Okay, actually, yes, exactly what I wanted. Um, so the big thing is with this is that <laughs> you know I leave the plane and I'm long about 300,000 contracts. Uh, you know, basically being going to be on a plane for about nine hours. And what I did was I actually set a stop for my long position for uh, for my December futures long position, uh, getting rid of some of that below about uh, I think it was 11.5 maybe. Yeah, I think it was 11.5. Once we broke that, I would I didn't want to be on anymore as we said uh, yesterday. I believe it was. Was. And then on top of that, what I did is I sold some calls against it as well, just in case, because I felt like there might be a little bit of fuckery around. And uh, I wasn't really, you know, I, it, my, my, my intent wasn't to make money uh, while I was on a plane. My intent was to cover myself. And what ended up actually happening was a little bit of a magical situation where I got lucky. This is not good trading, what I'm about to say, but I do think it's important to be transparent. Um, and uh, and I got lucky in this situation. So I sold those calls against, I sold the 11,000 strike calls um, about 30 or 40 times for for five hundred to eight hundred dollars region, and those actually expired when Bitcoin dumped below eleven thousand yesterday night. So Bitcoin goes down to like ten thousand eight hundred, ten thousand nine hundred. 
those calls expire worthless immediately bitcoin rallies back up 500 dollars, and i'm long once again because now i'm uncovered from those calls which just expired worthless and so my long stock or sorry long coin is now long once again anyways with regards to that uh again this is that is pure luck in the way that that happened um you know i should have known better actually it, you know if if i was really thinking it through i should have done a bigger range i should have done more deep in the monies but uh remember i mean when i put that position on bitcoin was at twelve thousand dollars anyways with regards to this um, you know, in this current region right here, I have no real bias. This is kind of a no trade zone to me. The only thing from a higher time frame perspective that I think is is, is still compelling is the two day uh, red 10 moon average right here. As long as Bitcoin is above it, you know, technically still okay, st technically still fine for the more longer term. But uh, the second that we start closing dildos below this region right here on the two day time frame, which is 10,800, and you know, that's going to really come into confluence with the daily 21, as you'd imagine, because you know, daily is, is just half of two days, so the 21 is going to be pretty damn similar to the, to the 10 and simple. Um, and uh, both those areas are going to be coming into conflict with each other. If Bitcoin breaks them, uh, that will switch around the bias for looking for some significant downside. Like I said, a uh, real target is going to be about uh, 9,200 to 9,300 and uh, probably do get a bounce around there. But I do think that we'd ultimately end up lower at around 8,500 and uh, and beyond. But for right now, until we actually break this region, it is not appropriate, in my opinion, to be holding positions uh, angled for that. I'm not in any sort of real shorts right now. Like I said, I, I mean, I I do have a short right here, but I'm actually a little bit net long. As you can see, I'm five, I'm five deltas long right now. I'm actually long some calls as well. So overall, you know, I, I really have no real intent to, uh, to put on any real positions as long as we're within this range. And uh, let's now go down to the lower time frames because that's actually where all the action is happening. Because Bitcoin has such, you know, massive ranges now, uh, <laughs> there there uh, there really is a lot of opportunity actually, even on like an even on like an hourly and sometimes even below. Crazy as it sounds. Uh, so right here on the four hour, we can see. Actually, I want to go to the three hour. Okay, so three hour right here. There's a couple things to be aware of as uh, we do see that Bitcoin is, you know, is, is looking pretty droopy here, to be fair. Uh, it does look like it actually wants to come back down and test around 10,500 ish region uh, as this is actually kind of shaping into its own head and shoulders right here, which I very rarely call out these formations. I just I, I strongly dis dis uh, dislike formations. Um, but, you know, you got to call a spade a spade. And this one actually does have the right signature on it, does have the right neckline, does have the right shape, does have the right size, does have, do, do, uh, does have the right volume signature. And uh, when that when those things do happen, and, you know, do you have to be aware of it? Of course, though, more importantly, until we actually close a, uh, a three day or sorry, uh, not a three day, but a three hour dildo below this pivot right here at about 10,900. It is not in place. And of course, more importantly, when we're talking about patterns that are contra to the overall market direction, the overall macro direction, more importantly, um, which is still very much the upside. We're still in a, We're still in an overall uptrend on the macro. Um, I the the statistics of these playing out are greatly diminished. In fact, I've gone through a bunch of research and I believe if if I recall correctly, it's actually less than a 30% hit rate for a head and shoulders when you're in an overall macro uptrend and vice versa for an inverted head and shoulders. So whenever people call those around, it's one of those things that big market movers like to paint in the charts because Bitcoin's, you know, quite a liquid. And so, you, you know, it doesn't take as much money as it would in, you know, regular stock markets to uh, to paint things in. And so once you start painting, painting things in, well, then you can get all of the retailers screaming about it. And once you get all the retailers screaming about it, then you get everyone on the wrong side of the trade. So with that said, um, you know, this area right here, very much, you know, it's, 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 it's certainly, it's certainly, it's certainly a topic of conversation, but until we actually break it, I wouldn't be playing it, but uh, understand how that would actually have an avalanche of effects going forwards. Because if we do break this area right here, there's going to be a measure move actually coming down significantly further, which is going to point us probably down into like the low 9,000s, I'd imagine. Yeah, but or sorry, not, uh, uh, not low 9,000s, but below 10,000, which is obviously going to have confluences with breaking the daily 21 the two day 10 simple and that would change the medium term bias towards looking for a move ultimately towards uh, you know at the very least 92 to 9300 and probably beyond i said you know i i, I do strongly believe that uh we'd probably hit 8500 if that if that route was chosen um but until that happens i still would be uh, I, I would still be agnostic in this region and technically you know the trend is your friend until the end of the trend and the trend and the macro trend is still very much up so the two day 21 very important here if that does break that's going to be your big warning signal that's going to be closing later tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, as we also do see uh, on the two-hour dildo time frame right here, let's actually go back and uh, this is something that we've been looking at for the past um, for the past like five, six months. We spoke about it actually earlier this week, if 
if you remember, with uh, just looking at these two moving averages right here. So let me actually just get rid of everything and we can just talk about them uh, very specifically. Get rid of all, all of them right there. And all we're going to be looking at is the blue 37 seven exponential moving average and the white 200 simple moving average. And you'll notice that ever since Bitcoin switched around its overall macro trend, which happened in, uh, I'd say really happened in February, all, you know, Bitcoin bottomed out in January, of course, but it didn't actually switch around the trend until really February. And that's when these two moving averages had great interplay into telling us what's going on in this overall phase. So here's what I'm saying. Every time that Bitcoin has broken this white 200 cent moon average, it has gotten reaccumulated along the blue 37 cent exponential moon average and has it basically it basically created an accumulation zone between those two when it broke the 200 simple and that becomes extremely good buys. And Bitcoin, you know, it, it can close it can close some dildos below the uh, the blue 377, but it's not it's not opening and closing dildos below, which is significant. That's what that's when I really say that we have like a confirmed kill of a moving average. And when we look at this right here, we do see going all the way forwards, you know, breaks it right in over here, gets accumulated, then boom up, breaks it right in over here, gets reaccumulated, then boom, big up, then breaks it right in over here, gets reaccumulated, then boom, big up, baby, massive green dildo party, breaks it right in over here and reaccumulates once again, and massive girthy green dildos. Um, I'm curious how this sound's going to come out on this uh, on this video. I'm, it sounds like I'm in a fucking warehouse right now, but uh, apparently sound is just bouncing off of all these walls. So I have to soundproof this place. Anyways, uh, oh, I should also explain. Yeah, I am running with uh, with just about you know twenty, like a quarter percent of what I'm you know of, of what I usually want to do, and uh, I think I think once I get one, one, once the weekend's over, I should have everything ready. But for now, unfortunately, no video, no nothing else. Um, anyways, uh, and probably probably should sound through this as well as I you know as I come to think of it, and also massively jet flag. So I do apologize about any sort of uh, well less than coherent thoughts. So. With regards to what we're looking at right now, what is Bitcoin doing? Bit, well, sorry, I also forgot to mention that this one right on over here. This is what we spoke about earlier this week, right? So what is Bitcoin doing right now? It's actually holding on for dear life on this white 200 simple on the two hour total time frame. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this is a major pivot on the market. It changes our short term bias or sorry, this, you know, this is not financial bias from a financial advisor, but uh, you know, if I'm sharing my opinion on this, this is the short term bias changer, if you want to call it that. And what I mean by that is uh, as long as Bitcoin's above it, you know, still is actually fine from a short term time frame perspective. Now you can't see that we're quite droopy upon this area, but uh, even as we speak right now, or, or perhaps I speak to you, it's a little bit of a one-sided conversation. I do apologize. It'd be better, you know, if we could have some back and forth, right? Um, but I suppose that's what the comments are for. And we do see that Bitcoin is actually getting bought back up off this uh, white 200 simple once again. So what is that telling us? Well, it's telling us essentially that uh, Bitcoin's looking, you know, uh, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's still holding it. So if it's still holding it, I mean, this is actually an okay area. And you know what? If that's going to be okay, what I'll do right now it's actually buy a little bit, of the, little bit of this position back. Um, I, I, I guess I might have had, I must have had another stop in there because I didn't realize I went, I actually went short on this. But I'm only, yeah. I mean, I mean, I really want to just reduce my deltas, but uh, can probably put back on, probably, probably buy it all back. And you know, I'll do somewhere down around here. Just give it a few bucks. And uh, oh, so I'll leave that there. Again, not going to be putting on anything real, but basically I'm happy to take this trade as long as we remain above this. So this is why I love movement averages. They give you very, very good insight on what the bots and algos are doing in this market. It looks like it just got filled. And um, with regards to that, you know, it's 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 one of those things that gives you a clear and obvious signal because m most bots and algos are in some way programmed off something like this. So when you start to break one of these areas, it's a good, it's a damn good signal. The trade ain't going to work out and vice versa for when it keeps on holding it. So right now we're still getting that signature of it still holding it. We've been getting it ever since we actually had this massive uh, little trappy trap right here. So I'll, you know, I'll play the position as long as we're above this region. But uh, like I said, for myself, my focuses right now are, aren't getting my, uh, my new life set up. So, you know, I don't want to be putting on massive positions. Uh, I won't be running with a position like I had earlier this week on my fucking streamer account. Very, very silly. I mean, on my streamer account, I usually like to keep things below 20 Bitcoins for whatever reason. Uh, during this week, I had about 40, uh, I think 40 or 45 Bitcoin long on my streamer account which ended up working out. But uh, again, you know, that's it's, it's, it's priorities right now. So for me, uh, if I'm looking at this, you know, very easy trade to be managing as we're right there. It's right at 11,016 bucks. So, you know, if if uh, if Bitcoin does break it, then I'd be looking for a move probably back down in this region at the very least, which is uh, lower 10,000. So it's going to have confluences into the daily and the two day. So, of course, if this area does break, 
then we probably have some problems. And uh, pretty much each and every time that we do break the white trend simple, we do go down and test the blue three seven seven nine benchmark average. In fact, in fact, every time since we actually switched around the uh, the mark cycle in February. So again, these two ones have been actually damn good at telling us where the accumulation phase is on this. And, it, and more importantly, it'll tell us when we have a change of behavior. Change of behavior meaning time did not. <laughs> you know, t uh, uh, time to not time to not be friends with the former trend, essentially. So uh, if we do break this area, that's going to likely have carry on over into the higher time frames. That's my point. That's where things start to change around. And uh, once again, the white 200 simple and the blue 377 are coming into play on uh, on the two-hour total time frame. So I'll put back on all of the major movement averages, and we'll go through and check out what our lower time frames are actually looking like right now. We do see two-hour uh, two-hour Stokes actually kind of turning down. What are hourly looking like? Hourly is turning down as well. So not good. I usually don't like when those two line up, we actually typically do see price action follow through with them. Uh, what about three hour? Three hour is going to be up. Okay. Usually uh, <laughs> if three hour and four hour are both up, then I'd actually go with them. And what do we see here? Four hours down as well. So probably what we're going to see is we're going to see a little bit of down. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, Usually when I see a setup like this, I want to see a little bit of uh, like a slight pullback on the shorter term time frames, and then medium time frames typically take over. And so we work our way back onwards and up again. So I would say that this would line up up with a, with with actually Bitcoin getting picked up here, and that the and that the daily and the two day actually do hold their areas at least for now, and uh, and still you know short term medium term bias can be to the upside, albeit I would be cautious. Like I said uh, myself, I'm really not looking to play this you know in a huge way in a huge move, um, but you know looking at these sorts of things right here, it does uh, it does look more or less it's it's playable I suppose you could say, although uh, I, I usually like it when more things line up. Uh, going over here to the eight hour, I'm curious what the eight hour is looking like. Eight hour Stokes actually coming down. So we're actually getting bifurcation between all of them. In fact, the eight hour look clearly, the eight hour just formation looks clearly bearish right here, funnily enough. Uh, even though we are holding this green 50, this is not, this is typically not a good setup. Oop, uh oh, what am I, what's going on over here? Um, 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 let's see. I might have to put this video on hold, but. Mm, now nah, just I'll, I'll let it go go through the keeper anyways um okay cool so let's go over here to the 12 hour 12 hour stokes are still up actually and i usually don't like trading against these ones these one have been damn good um ever since bitcoin you know especially for like the last uh, half year ever since bitcoin switched around the trend uh the bullish crosses on this have actually been pretty damn good so See, these did catch the, par the prior low of that last dump. And same thing with this guy right on over here. And even the crosses in the more critical zone, you know, leading up through these uh, these pumps right here from about 9,200 all the way to 10,000. And again, right on over here from 10,000 all the way to 13,000. So that is usually a good signal that they are actually getting played off of. And more importantly, we do see historical volatility percentile getting extremely red right now, which tells me that more or less, or sorry, not more or less, but more importantly and more likely what we're looking at is one massive consolidation coming off of a a, you know, basically a parabolic run, essentially. So does this consolidation turn into reaccumulation or distribution is the real question. And right now, I actually think that is too early to say. So I do, you know, I, I don't really have a strong bias either which way. I think more importantly, I'd rather just, you know, I'd rather just watch price action unfold. And it's completely fine to do that. I mean, more often than uh, not more often than not, but there's definitely times where, you know, it's it's not clear what price action is doing. If you're not comfortable with, with, with what's going on, it's completely fine to have no position. In fact, having no position is a position in the way that, uh, in the way that a trader will think of it. So for myself, man, when I'm not feeling comfortable, I am happy to just sit back and watch, especially when I'm busy with, you know, other lives type shit. And, uh, and so right now, no, you know, no different of a situation. And uh, I'm not not really feeling, you know, you can probably tell in my voice, I'm really not feeling too confident on price action right here. If I had to lean one way, I, I'd, I'd say that this area probably holds, but, you know, you know, Bitcoin probably grinds out and then pulls through. But uh, I, you know, do, do I have massive positions going long right now? Fuck no, I don't. And uh, I don't intend to. Let's go actually check out the, uh, the expected moves um, uh, ranges right here. So again, this is a, an indicator based off of expected moves, based off of historical volatility percentile which, or sorry, no, it's actually just, it's actually just based off of historical uh, volatility. Anyways, uh, you can see this would actually be a little bit more on the bearish side. We do have that first standard deviation. So encompassing the 68%, this is the 68% uh, range right here between the green ranges, which is actually a little bit more angled to the downside. It's a range between about 11,900 to the upside and uh, 10,350 to the downside. So there's a lot of room down there. And usually when you see something like that, that would imply that there's actually a little bit more pressure there. So so again, you know, going through all the different time frames, I'm not finding anything conclusive from my end. I don't, I, again, I do not feel confident on price action right here. That's completely fine. 
Anyways, uh, let's let's go back on over to our uh, our spot charts. And actually, you know, before I do that, let's go back here and actually put on a uh, a 30 length and just see if this changes anything. Sometimes this one actually does give a more accurate range. Let's see if it looks a little bit better. It it actually looks hmm. It actually looks a little bit worse for the uh, bulls there. Yeah, so fair enough. Uh, 15, 15 looks a little bit more forgiving, but uh, neither that you know, b uh, both of them would actually paint a more bearish picture because remember, it's going to be all of the confluent factors that lead us into breaking the higher time frame major, major pivot areas, which is going to be that 10,600-ish area that we broke back above just a few days ago. So again, these areas, you know, always hold true. So always, you know, uh, you know, uh, a good um, what's it called? Like a good habit to get into is uh, write down those major pivots on the market because they they typically stay there in the market and uh, putting on our trend lines right here you can see that we still have the same trend line right here uh, sorry right here the blue box territory remember uh coming back from uh first of july or sorry second of july for first and second of july right here as soon as Bitcoin broke back above it, boom, nice move up to our next blue box territory. Now we're coming back down and where are we basing off of? Basically the blue box territory. So if, you know, if, 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 uh, if we do break that territory, then likely going to be the floodgates down to lower levels because we're going to see the higher time frame start to really take on a more bearish structure. So for right now, you know, Bitcoin's kind of in purgatory and uh, I, I suppose, and in, 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 in like you see, I am long right now, but I'm not, I'm not too excited about it. Although, you know, if I did have a play position, e either one's fine. If you're going off this two hour, once again, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's easier to manage right here just because we're literally right on that moving average. So if we do break it, if we actually do close the two hour diddle below it, then I'll just flip short or I probably won't even flip short. I'll probably just go completely neutral and uh, call it a day. Um, but for now, you know, big, uh, Bitcoin just doing its thing. Anyways, um, let's go on and back to our higher time frames. I want to check out the two-day and the three-day uh, also. Just, we haven't really done that. Or sorry, first, let's start off with the daily. Yeah, so daily Stokes gave a little bit of a fake out the other day, right? We had uh, we had them converging on each other, and they looked like they were going to cross, especially as Bitcoin was was uh, was closing on 12,000. And then, boom, massive red dildo party shoving all bullish bungholes into popsicle land. So what I mean by that is usually when you get a tr like a fake out like that at a major pivot, you know, the 12,000 region that's actually a signal that's uh you know not you know not so good things are about to happen um even though I'm kind of am maintaining a more neutral stance here, uh, what what's happened over the past few days would actually imply that. Although tentacles still holding up for the, you know for the upside for now, but it, you know it's it's just it's more botanicality in my opinion. Um, anyways, uh, looking at uh, daily historical volatility percentile, very very red as well. So what what does that tell us? T tells us that we're likely consolidating. Uh, daily RSI is is completely neutral right here. And here's the thing about the RSI: the RSI would be on the more um, constructive side. Of if you want to say that we're just also in between the bullish control zone and the neutral zone. And typically that, you know, that's, that's, that's what you get during your overall bull trends. I mean, we've been doing that since uh, shit. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time since we were even in the bearish control zone. Yeah. All the way in, in, uh, in early February. So throughout the whole last uh, four or five months, Bitcoin's just been in the in, in the bullish control zone in the neutral zone, and we're still doing that right now. So another big indication if we're going to switch up the buys is if you see the uh, daily RSI dip back down below the neutral zone and actually head for the bearish control zone. If we start doing that, that's going to be a little bit of a warning signal. Although you can see it would take its time to do right. It's not going to be happening today or uh, or tomorrow. But you know if we start to break those, uh, you know if we start to break st uh, structure on the higher time frames, it's going to have carry on over into those time frames. Absolutely. Anyways, um, let's go check out uh, three day. We haven't done that just yet three day is three days the one that i have the most difficulty th th three days is the most bearish one really uh we do th see three day stokes coming down and here's the thing three day stokes um you know, certainly can spend some time in the more critical zone, especially during your, especially during very aggressive uptrends, as we've seen in the past. But you'll notice that uh, we've had kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know what I want to call this, but like a, a, a double hump, the 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 double camel pattern right here, if you want to call it that. Just make up a bullshit name, and then you can, and then you can write a book about it and be rich, as people think you're a fucking genius for coming up with the name of a pattern. No, what I mean is, you know, we 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 uh, we basically get into the critical zone, come back down, test the edge of it, and then bounce back up, and then go down and we've seen the signature many times but my point is and what we've seen in the past is we've actually never seen triple touches down on the critical zone and bounces up we you know at most we get two we get you know first one up down one boom first one up down one boom and then same thing right here same thing right here and all of those leads into you know major major floods uh to the downside so that would be certainly more on the bearish side and the three-day uh the three-day jewel is 
is in a decision point as well. We do see the three-day jewel curl back down. The question is, and if you have access to the jewel, pay attention to this. If you see the light blue oscillator break, if you see the light blue oscillator close below, especially if we get two, two consecutive closes below, uh, the, the yellow oscillator right here, the, the, the very slow one, then I would be looking for a flood of price action actually i'd look for us to come back down into the neutral zone much you know way down around here and that's going to align with price action probably coming down to at the very least the low 9000s region so 9200 9300 again it's just you know it's it's everything kind of related to each other so understand how the lower time frames it, you know relate to the medium time frames and how they interact with the higher time frames and then the higher time frames showing you the overall direction the, the you know the potential for destruction right here uh you know if we are to head that way um, and I'm saying all this while I'm long. Again, this is just this is just trading. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to switch around my buys if we do break that area that we spoke about earlier. Um, let's go down. Let's go over here to the weekly. What does the weekly look like? Uh, weekly is very interesting to me because we will be seeing CMEs close later tonight at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So that's in a couple hours actually. And uh, we do see CMEs so far looking kind of kind of kind of anemic. What I really want to see on CMEs is closing above 12,000. If I was going to maintain a little bit more of a bullish bias, now this one closing like. Uh, you know, as, as you see it right now, would not be a death sentence in and of itself, but it certainly doesn't look good. And I would say that when you pair that up with looking at our weekly, uh, our weekly momentum oscillators right here, the good old mom oscillators with their chicken tennies crossed down, I would have to say that that is also not the best signal as well as we've been straight up for the past, uh, for the past six months, ever since um, February right here. In fact, if we go all the way back to our spot charts, you can see that this is a little bit more aggressive to the downside. And more importantly, you know, Bitcoin typically doesn't get these moves uh, going on for too long, as you can see, even in even in the bull market of uh, you know of, of twenty of basically of twenty sixteen to twenty eighteen, we do see you know a nice signature there where where we work our way up there constructively. In this one, we've just gone straight up, haven't even crossed down, haven't even bothered crossing down since uh, since February. So again, you know, does that line up with Bitcoin coming down for a little bit of a pullback? Actually, yes, it does. Of course, you already know that. Anyways, uh, Bitcoin back below eleven thousand right now. I see, so I might getting, I might be getting out of this position pretty damn soon. But remember, where is that? Where is the level? I, I want to go back and make sure on the two hour. Yeah, the two hour, two hundred simple coming in right around eleven, eleven twenty five, eleven spot two five, um, and we got forty three minutes and nineteen seconds on this to close. If it closes below, then like I said, I'll be getting out of this position, and uh, I won't flip short, but I'll like, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be going neutral, and I'd say it's, you know pretty fucking reasonable to be short after that uh looking for a move probably down you know 10,600 <laughs> then we start to deal with the daily and if the daily closes below there then we can start targeting moves uh much further down anyways with all of that said, I do want to check out the um, I do want to check out the crypto fear and greed index. What are we taking at right now? 67. So big, uh, I hate that they did this. They actually got rid of all the history of this, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see right on over here, we only get yeah we only get the last 90 days. That's not good enough. Yeah, un unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, this this is just not useful here. Um, hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, kind of destroys the purpose because what I want to show is the differences between the bear market and the bull market. Um, we're not going to get it right now. Anyways, I'd say that this is kind of a comfort zone for me. As, as if if we do see the crypto fear and greed index get back down, you know, anywhere below 40 into the into like the slightly greedyish zone, that's where I would say probably do have a little bit of bottom in action. I don't think that Bitcoin spends that much time within that region. Um, but if we do get down around there, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking for signs. So uh, you know, for, for potential long-term play. Anyways, uh, for right now, we can't really get too much off this, unfortunately. Um, what else do we have? The Bitcoin longs and shorts. We still see longs paying a pretty significant rate, whereas uh, shorts are paying no rate. And I don't really care about the aggregate amount of these guys against each other, just because you can claim positions, uh, you know, uh, you know, off the books, which kind of destroys the point. But my point is, is that, you know, when I look at this, uh, I think to myself, hey, uh, longs are paying a lot more rates. So it's, it's, it's going to be more difficult to hold these positions. And that is a consideration that you do have to make. And, you know, if you are, even if you are going to settle that position, you still have to, you know, you still have to sell your longs, right? Anyways, uh, getting back on into our, you know, into our charts right here, let's go check out the other top shit coins, see how they're doing. Maybe we can get some more insight into price action. And the thing that I noticed at first, and remember, I'm kind of taking a first glance at these charts today, you know, after basically, basically being away from two days, uh, Ethereum is bearish. Uh, Ethereum is fucking bearish right here. It wants to go down. If Ethereum wants to go down, you know, and if and if and if we see all the other majors looking bearish, 
probably going to see Bitcoin fall through with them. You know, we really want to see the whole market healthy with each other, not just one, you know, healthy and the, and the rest not. Um, it's, di you know, it'd be different if we were talking about ber versus uh, Satoshi's versus Bitcoin, but versus US dollar, we want to see things generally moving in the same direction. So we see the Estabutero right here breaking the yellow 21 yesterday and then using it today as resistance is, I, I'd say if this one holds today, if, if, if we do close below 291, uh, what is this yet? Uh, 290 and a quarter, um, later tonight uh, at, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, I'd be looking for a move back down to about 267, 270-ish region down around here. Test the green 50 exponential moon average. I'm curious how the two-day looks. Two-day looks, mm, yeah, two-day's not dead just yet, but, you know, I... <sighs> It's going to be hard to have a bullish bias. I mean, there, I'm, not, I'm not bullishly biased on this one is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if we do close the two-day, which does close later tonight as well, um, anywhere above uh, 296, and I'd say it would be appropriate to, to re-ascertain a bullish bias, but it's, you know, with what, we, we have about, what, four hours to go? Yeah, about four hours to go, and uh, not looking too damn hot right here. Anyways, um, Let's get back down and uh, and check out the weekly. What is the weekly looking like? Weekly is looking pretty fucking weak. In fact, we do have fall through to the downside here. Um, so target would be if you know if 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 we do to fail to close above that level that we just spoke about, target will be coming into next week somewhere around 255. Um, 255 to 260 ish region. Anyways, go check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Uh, to 119 and a quarter, or 119 and a, 119 and a nickel. Hmm. Weekly still holding up above the red 10 symbol. But how does the daily look? Yeah, daily looks. Daily is interesting. You can see very obvious, uh, uh, you know, very obvious accumulation around that green 50 exponential moon average. But the second that this thing breaks, yeah, you know, I have to get bearish for a much larger move down to the low 100s. Uh, 104, 105 would be the next uh, target area. And uh, this right here, you know, would be confirmed as distribution. So if that does happen, it's going to imply a little bit more long term issues for uh, for Litecoin, you know, over the next, you know, over the next couple of weeks. And that again, you know, if we don't see Litecoin and Mr. Butero healthy, if, if our beautiful lady and and, you know, and Mr. Buter aren't healthy, then probably Bitcoin is going to take the southern road here as well. Um, but hey, you know, as long as long as it holds up above this green 50, I mean, basically what I'm saying, as long as it doesn't go down, you know, it's fine. Yeah, of course. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? You know, you can take trades off this and use it as a risk management tool is what I'm, you know, is what I'm trying to go off of. Of course, it's not, again, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing what I, how I trade this one. Um, we do see Daily Stokes crossing back to the downside after a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a fake out there. Usually not a good sign either. So uh, I would, you know, if I did have to lean one way, it would be to the downside here. Um, but would I be taking tra uh, trace to the downside just yet? No, I wouldn't. Uh, not not until we break the not not until we break this area on the daily, and that is currently at around uh, one one sixteen spot eight eight. So <laughs> still technically above there right now. Still technically holding it. So I, I wouldn't even be taking that trade just yet. I mean, you know, it, it'd be equally as valid to take a long here and then just manage right there. And well, you know, let the let the chips fall where they may. If if we close below, flip short, and you probably have a nice trade. You know, another ten bucks down. Anyways, um, let's go check out how did uh, how are traditional marks doing right now? Did they close for the week? I don't even know my times right now. Yes, of course they did. It's fucking four four twenty. Oh my god, great number. But uh, yeah, looking at traditional marks, they're gonna close the week pretty fucking strong. Uh, weekly looks really really good. Um, we even came up with some pretty damn strong uh, jobs numbers uh, this morning. So that's that was like the only economic data coming in um, until I think like next month when FOMC decides interest rates once again. And because the jobs were so good, typically you know that's gonna lead into. Uh, it, you know, into pressure to, to uh, sorry, to raise those rates because the economy is looking a little bit better. But then we have a whole political situation where the president, or sorry, the president of the United States um, is, uh, is, is, kind of, is, is in a way like kind of threatening the, <laughs> you know, the Fed to not raise interest rate, obviously because, you know, it, it helps the stock market go up, you know, it makes printing money a little bit easier. And uh, that's a whole situation in and of itself. But uh, we'll get to that another, you know, perhaps at a later time. As far as charts go, it still looks good. It still looks good to me. I'd still be bullish on traditional markets. Market's been bullish on it for a while and uh, still be bullish on it right now. Monthly still looking fine and uh, overall just chugging its way along. Uh, you know, along. How do we close the day? Yeah, day, uh, it looks like we it looks like we closed up on the last hour of the day. So, uh, so, so you know, the Boston algos brought it back up, you know, just before close. They wanted to get a good close before the holiday weekend. And of course, this is basically just a holiday week in general. Uh, most U.S. traders just take the whole week off. You know, if you're, if you're like an actual professional trader on the floor, uh, barely anyone would go in during this week. So typically things just kind of float around and generally up for the holidays. Um, what else we got, though? Uh, and of course, you know, this being correlated to Bitcoin, as we've shown, you know, in the higher time frames, does make me, you know, still kind of, still kind of be a little bit optimistic 
optimistic for some upside here, but uh, let's actually just show this really quick. I should bring it up. Um, where is it? There we go. Let's bring up the correlation coefficient. And where is it, baby? Where is it? There you are. And we can actually measure the correlation. So I, I you know, I, th I think it's appropriate to show this. Although if you've been here for a little bit of time, you probably know we do see the purple histogram essentially showing a positive correlation between uh, this asset right here, SPY, SPX, which is basically the major index or it's the, uh, the major indice for the U.S. markets and uh, in Bitcoin. So they are actually positively correlated. So a bullish spy would actually, you know, be good for Bitcoin. And we do see momentum also just pointing back up, defending the bullish control zone. We do see uh, RSI looking very, very good here. I think that the RSI is actually quite healthy. Um, so I think that this one actually could have some more room to go. I think $300 is quite likely. Um, anyways, go check out what are the other top shit coins doing? We got Mr. Link BTC here. Link BTC looking damn good. Holy shit. Powerful link. Oh my God. Powerful. Did it hit my target? We got, we got down to 29 or we, uh, my target was 26, uh, 26 and a half thousand. We got down to 27,000. Close enough is close enough. This one too damn strong. Marching its way back up. I do think that it reaches back towards 35,000 Satoshis. Uh, Cardano, what is Cardano looking like? Uh, getting, get, taking it on the chin once again, man, there's no rest for these, uh, for these altcoins. Even when Bitcoin, you know, is kind of going sideways and down here, they're still not getting any love. So that is not a good signal. Of course, the Bitcoin dominance chart still looking and, uh, pretty damn bullish. Um, and looking at, uh, you know, uh, uh, looking at Cardano here, uh, let's actually get, let's, let's get this off. Let's get this, uh, and let's, let's actually look at our RSI. We actually do have some massive bullish divergence coming on. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be putting, I wouldn't be piling on shorts here. We probably do have a pump back up to like five or sorry, seven forty seven you know, seven fifty ish region, uh, Satoshi's, um, you know, would I be getting more cute than that though? I don't know about that. Uh, but I do think that you get a little bit of a pop up here and uh, play that out just a little bit. Um, what else do we have? What about our, what about our daily stokes? Uh, eh, still kind of weak, but, um, Eh, I, you know, I, th I think that we do get a pop here. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, um, GBDC, how did GBDC close the week out? Um, yeah, actually GBDC closed the week out. Okay. Uh, closed, closed a couple of doji dollars above the red 10 symbol. Not bad. Uh, not great either. And uh, weekly going to close. Mm. Week, weekly actually not not a terrible close you know we have a we have a long legged doji right here and then it just gets bought up here so i'd say that that's actually a little bit more a uh, little bit more encouraging than anything else but uh, i don't think that gbdc is leading let's go check out bnb what's bnb doing again para tweezer top dildos right here i i am very apprehensive about looking at, you know about looking at that uh, let's look at the daily for a second what does the daily look like? Um, same same sort of thing as Mrs. Litecoin, actually. Uh, green 50 exponential moving average right here, 31 and 31 spot 83. Uh, if we do fail this area, it's going to be a it's it's going to be a nice little dump down, likely to the 29 dollar region, I'd say, and uh, then we'll kind of reassess from there. Um, by the same token, hey, if we do see any sort of a move back up above $34, that'd be massively bullish for BNB. If we see a move back up above $34, bucks, i would be looking for a move uh, back up to the prior highs, essentially. Uh, Zcash, what are we looking at here? It's $100 bucks and uh, $0.74. Cents. Losing the 21 I don't like this setup here. I do think, you know, it looks more droopy than anything to me. Probably coming down to $93.5. Bucks. Uh, daily also is mm, down. Daily RSI, mm probably does try to bounce in this region. You know, you're, I mean, I'm, I'm, I really don't have a strong opinion on, on any of these coins. Uh, let's see, what does weekly look like? Weekly's being, uh, weekly's being stifled by the green 50 exponential moon average. What do we see on weekly also? Just weekly, weekly slows coming down. Mm, not the most healthy of all time. Curious what a four hour looks like perhaps. Um, four hours still holding, I mean, it's, it's hard to get bearish on this one until we actually break this area first and foremost. Anyways, uh, what's Bcash doing? 400 bucks, 400 even almost. And what do we have on the daily? Daily looking probably very similar. I'd imagine, oh my God, it looks exactly the same. Do we actually close a, close a daily total below this? Then we got a little bit of problems. We are crossing the red 10 symbol below the uh, yellow 21. If you watch the video on that in the technical analysis 101 series, you know why that's a big deal to myself. Uh, we do see historic volatility percentile getting very, very, uh, uh, wait, how did that get, the, how did that get down there? Um, getting very, uh, getting very low right now. So we are actually going to be being seen likely an explosive move um, sometime relatively soon. The question is, is it to the upside or the downside? Well, if charts looking like this, mm, I wouldn't be too, uh, I wouldn't be too excited about it. Uh, looking at four hour, the area of interest is right around three, th let's just call it 389, 390-ish region. Uh, what about Tron? What's Tron doing? Tron actually up on the day. Um, 
Yeah, the, the magic number for Tron is where? Where would my magic number be? Again, it looks droopy here. I, I don't like how it's losing the, 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 uh, the blue 377 exponential moving average on the uh, daily. Um, you know, if, if, we close another, if we close another daily total below this, I, I, I probably wouldn't be too big of a fan. Uh, but we're right there. I mean, it does. It's, it's going to have a chance. It's currently at around uh, two spot nine cents. So we are above it. We're actually healthily above it right now. So as long as we're above that, you know, I wouldn't get too damn bearish on it. But if we do break it, I'd be looking for a move back down here towards, uh, uh, what is this, two and a half? Or sorry, yeah, about two and a half. Uh, what about Neo? What's what's Neo looking like? Neo is actually Neo actually looks like it looks like ju uh, just looks like a looks like a consolidation coming off of a nice uh, run, um, which would actually imply more bullishness to it. Uh, Neo actually looks okay to me. I, th I think it's actually creating a higher low right here and probably pops back up towards uh, 1780 region. That'd be the most compelling one. In fact, that's. Uh you know, if, if you're looking for reason to be bullish, be looking at NEO right now. Uh, EOS, what's EOS doing? Kind of creating a descending triangle right here. Uh, if we do break anywhere below 564, uh, likely going to have a target down here towards about 525, 530. Let's actually just do this one out. Just do this really, really quick. Uh, do a very bad drawing of this one. This is not scientific in the way that I'm doing it. Uh, I just want to do this for demonstration purposes and just to see if my eyeball is uh, correct on that one. So I said 525. Nope, it says 515. So yeah, about 515 if we do break this one to the downside. By the same token, if we do break this trend line right here to the upside or anywhere above $6, I'd be looking for a move back up here towards uh, 6 and a half to uh, maybe even $7. Sorry, yeah, about 6 and a half to, to about 665 um, if that were to happen. Um, what else we got, baby? What else we got? Uh, Ripple me nipples. Ooh, losing his legging a little bit as well. Did he break? Did he break that bottom support? Yes, he did. Okay, now we're actually starting to see some. Uh, we're starting to see some real shit now. The real shit. Um, not not a fan of this one. Uh, if we do break the purple 200 exponential moving average, I'd be looking for a move probably back, uh, you know, at the very least test about uh, uh, 36 cent, uh, but probably further down than that. I'm sp I'm starting to really not like this chart. Uh, weekly. Mm. Yeah, if if the weekly closes anywhere below uh, 37 cent by end of weekend, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, I'd be bearish on this one for actually a much larger move to the downside, probably back down um, to the low 30 cent region. Uh, what else? We got Monero here. What's Monero doing? Nine and a half dollars, and yeah, man, massive long legged doji. Right, this isn't even a long legged doji. This is a bearish engulfing dildo right here. Actually, my 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 favorite ones to play, uh, engulfings of any sorts. I don't have I don't I don't see racist colors like some people out there. Red and green all the same, and I love to play both those. Um, it's one typically reversal dildo formation, and we do see that actually lining up with our momentum oscillators as well. Not liking that. Uh, I do think that this one probably does come down. Then again, you know, I look at the four hour and this, this looks like it's getting accumulated here. It looks all fucking obvious accumulation. So which one do I go with? Typically higher time frames hold more weight, but this lower time, this is, this is obvious right here, actually. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not about having the crystal ball to tell which way it's going to go. There's very obvious areas of action here. So we have this area right here at uh, $92.5. If we do break $92.5 to the upside, I'd be looking for a move actually significantly further to the upside, uh, back above 100 to like 101.5 and, and, and perhaps beyond. By the same token, if we do break down below this region right here, even just take out the prior wick low at about 84 and a half bucks, I'd be looking for a move uh, lower. We'll call it lower right around 78 and a half or 78 and a quarter region. Uh, what about Stellar? Last one. Wait, where where is my Stellar? There he is, 10 cents. Still holding on to holding on for dear lives to the lows. But man, this chart is just getting beat up left right and center. Jesus Christ, man. Catch you no breaks, no rest for the wickets right here. Uh, like I said, though, you know, even though I don't like this chart, I, and we haven't liked it for a long time, I'd have to look at the weekly here. And uh, I have a big rule on the weekly. If you're approaching the white 200 simple or, or 200 exponential of, of which we're approaching both right now, I don't like to short until you actually break those fully and, and open and close the dildo below those right now. We're actually just resting right on it. So uh, I would, I would not, I would, I would kind of uh, hold back from doing anything like that. Although chart certainly doesn't look too compelling but um, uh, I don't think really an actionable uh, area right now. Anyway, let's go check out Mr. Bitcoin. And uh, again, we're going to have about what? A couple hours, or sorry, about 27 minutes and 17 seconds for this two hour dildo to end. Uh, the area of interest, again, 11, uh, 11 spots, uh, two, not, not 11 spot two five, it's 11, uh, 11,025 and 30 cents, by the way. Um, if we do close below there, then probably going to have some down, probably going probably gonna to see some turbulence to the downside. And uh, if we do close above, well, salvage for, you know, save, save by the bell yet again. So that's what I'd be watching right now. 
Um, I would get bullish back on Bitcoin. Or sorry, bullish is not the right word. I'd be looking for more upside if we do actually surpass this kind of local high right here at about 11,300. If we can do that, I'd be looking for a move back up into the high 11,000s, like 11,900, maybe 12,000, something like that. Um, but again, it's it's the higher time frames that are taking over right now. Uh, well, of course, you know, it's intermixed with the lower time frames as well, but the higher time frames are the ones that are going to take precedence and going to lead on into the, you know, into the bigger moves. So keep an eye on the daily and two-day total close. If the daily closes anywhere below the 21, uh, which is 10,600, I'd immediately get bearish um, for moves much lower into the lower 9,000s. As long as we hold above it, I, you know, I'm not I, bullish is not the right word for my opinion in this region right here, but I'd say it's still neutral and consolidating. So, you know, coming after coming after an uptrend like this still technically, you know, could, you know, could, could make the argument for it, but uh, it's, it's probably going to take its time. If this is going to remain bullish, it probably takes its time going sideways here. As we said a couple weeks ago, when we put in this uh, high right here, we're, we're likely to spend some time going sideways more than anything. And uh, I mean, just put in perspective here, we've been going straight up for the past five, six months, you know, uh, scrolling it all the way back here, just pretty much straight up ever since February, you know, Bitcoin's likely going to spend some time going sideways at the very least, if not down a little bit as well. After playing out a uh, you know after you know after playing out a massive move like this, so again that's what I'd be watching right now. And of course the two day as well. The two day perhaps even a bigger deal to me. If the two day total closes anywhere below the red ten simple, uh, I'd, I'd immediately get bearish, looking for a move much much uh, lower. Um, but right now actually holding it like a champ, ten thousand eight hundred is the area of action. So as long as we're above there, okay. And I think I'll leave you with that. So again I do apologize about the uh, slightly jet lagged, um, <laughs> maybe slurred in a little bit uh, analysis right now, but just wanted to get one out. Just got my new, new internet, so I am excited to see how fast this one is. So I'm going to upload it right now and uh, see see exactly what that's doing. So with all that said, I do want to wish you well on this post Independence Day, uh, or sorry, post, um, what is it? Fourth uh, of July day. And uh, as always, wishing you well from now Chicago, Illinois. And take care and see you soon.